Members of the Senate, please be in order. Members, you have before you for your consideration. Senate Bill 423. Clerk, read the history and title of the bill. Senate Bill 423, introduced by Esmond, by request of the Senate Judiciary Standing Committee, a bill for enacting Title and Act establishing the Montana Therapeutic Marijuana Act, and advising laws related to the use of marijuana, creating a system of licensing for the cultivation, manufacture, transportation, and transfer of marijuana for therapeutic use, providing definitions, providing rulemaking authority, creating a special revenue account, establishing a transition process, amending sections, repealing sections, and providing effective dates. Mr. Chairman. Are there any corrections to the history and title of the bill as read? None, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee, you have before you Senate Bill 423. What is your pleasure? Senator Essman. Mr. Chairman, I move that when this committee does rise and report after having had under consideration Senate Bill 423, that I recommend the same do pass. Mr. Chairman. Senator Essman. Mr. Chairman. Members, please take your seats. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I bring to you today Senate Bill 423, which is a bill to deal with the with what the people of Montana wish to do with respect to the use of marijuana by people that have severe illnesses or terminal illnesses. What brought us to this day? In 2004, November 2004, the voters of Montana passed the Montana Medical Marijuana Act into law. The, there is a handout in front of you that shows since that was adopted, there was a fairly small number of patients within the state of Montana who would received certifications from physicians that were receiving uh, this product to help them deal with their symptoms. In October of 2009, the Department of Justice issued a letter to its to its U.S. attorneys and prosecuting assistants around the country in which it stated that enforcement of federal law on the use, transportation, distribution of marijuana would not be a high priority for those in those 14 states that that had adopted these type of statutes. Subsequently, under the terms of the Montana Medical Marijuana Act as adopted by initiative, because there was ambiguity in the, in those laws, there has been an explosion in the number of certified patients. There has been a creation of a storefront dispensary system, uh, which is not mentioned anywhere in the Act. There have been certifications by out-of-state physicians, in traveling caravans. There's been a lot of problems that, frankly, in my opinion, made a mockery out of the good intentions of the Montana voters. Just a couple of weeks ago, a number, quite a number, of large growing operations were 
rated by federal officials. Uh, indicating that this substance, this product, this plant is still a controlled substance under federal law and will be dealt with in that fashion. Also, in early February, a letter was issued by the U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of California in response to a request from the city of Oakland about a large industrial grow operation in which the U.S. Attorney stated that they, the law would be enforced against that type of operation. We subsequently saw that it was in the state of Montana. So we have a mess on our hands. And we have to do something to deal with that mess. And for that reason, the Judiciary Committee formed a special subcommittee which examined all the bills before that had been presented in both the House and the Senate with respect to dealing with this mess. And the, the subcommittee, followed by work of the full committee, brought forth the bill that I'm presenting you today. And I'm going to quickly try to go through, but let's, let's flip to the second page of that handout. It shows there that the breakdown of the, the patients by medical condition as of the end of last year. You can see the, the numbers in and all the various categories are very small except the severe or chronic pain designation. If you flip to the third page, you can see the age distribution of the certified card holders, the largest number being almost 7,000 in the 21 to 30 year old age group. So what's in this act? I'm going to, this act is really structured in three sections. The first part is in sections 1 to 16, and this deals with regulations, regulation of the certification process. With respect to physicians, it requires a bona fide doctor-patient relationship, and it defines that bona fide relationship as consisting of four or more visits over six or more months. Now, I want to make clear, because you've all received a bunch of emails, that this is not four visits within six months. This could have been four visits over three years or five years if there is a bona fide doctor-patient relationship. The six months is a minimum period of time, and the four visits is a minimum number of visits. It specifies borrowing on uh, work uh, presented in Representative Barry's bill in the House that telemedicine may not be used. It defines a minimum standard of care to be observed by the physicians who provide the certification. The bill as amended allows the Board of Medical Examiner to continue to uh, evolve and administer its standards so it can make them higher as it sees fit, but it specifies what the minimum standard of care would be. The, um, in our review of the current situation in the state of Montana, we have about 330 to 350 physicians that have issued these, these certifications. We discovered that 33 physicians <coughs> accounted for 93 percent of the certifications. 33 physicians provided for 93 percent of the certifications. 
those 33 doctors each certified an average of 780 patients. I don't know of the, me the medical practice very well, but I doubt a physician can serve 780 patients in a primary care relationship in a responsible fashion. So for that reason, this bill includes a requirement on the Department of Public Health and Human Services to refer to the board for review any physician who certifies more than 25 patients in a 12-month period. It's not saying that they've done anything wrong or, or assuming it. It's just that we've asked the board to review to ensure that the minimum standard of care is being followed. The bill requires that with respect to severe chronic pain, a second physician review is required. Now the, the act that's on the books right now speaks of severe or chronic pain. The bill that's before you requires severe chronic pain. It requires the second physician do a document review and that the uh, certification involve some diagnostic test that shows what is causing that severe chronic pain. It, it lays some things out, x-ray, CT scan, MRI, it allows the Board of Medical Examiners to in indicate what those diagnostics tests would be. It also, the bill also brings forth a suggestion that was offered by Senator Vukovic in his bill to require a second review, a second physician for certifications of minor children. It includes a prohibition on physician affiliation with licensees which under this bill are limited to growers or manufacturers. With respect to cardholders, the restrictions in the bill limit it to Montana residents. It, it provides that people under the supervision and control of the Department of Corrections cannot be licensed, cannot be registered cardholders. It requires that the department uh, issue a laminated card and the cardholder must have that in possession and upon demand uh, show the card and a photo ID. It repeals the affirmative defense with respect to persons that are not in possession of a card, which has created, a, as we heard from testimony before the committee, uh, problems for law enforcement. And it provides that a DUI conviction results in loss of the card. The bill includes authority for local governments to zone and regulate the location, density, inspection procedures, et cetera. It permits cities and towns to exclude growers and manufacturers from their communities, as a number of communities in the state have. It includes provisions for healthcare facilities to deal with the situation when somebody shows up at, at the hospital or the emergency room with, with uh, marijuana. And it creates an advisory board that will meet twice a year to provide advice with respect to either limiting or ad adding conditions to the list, uh, limiting or making changes to the law with respect to increases or decreases in amounts. Those recommendations would go to an inter the Interim Law and Justice Committee. Any recommendations would need to be adopted by this body, the policy-making body in the legislature. So that is the first part of the bill, which deals with licensing and, and regulation. Taylor.
The second section of the bill deals with um, with the control mechanism that's provided by the bill. Basically, we looked. We the current system involves uh, a caregiver who can provide. Thank you, Senator. A caregiver who can provide can grow and provide to a patient. That system has allowed, uh, because of its ambiguity, uh, the larger grow operations and the dispensary system that's all based upon a patient card and a, and a, a caregiver card. We looked at a number of different options. There is the Alaska option that has uh, uh, one caregiver for one patient. Um, the, uh, there was the Colorado system, which was in the House Bill 68 interim committee bill that came forward, which basically is, I would call, the business model with licensed storefronts, etc. cetera. Uh, what we, we also reviewed the plan that we put into this bill for your consideration, and that is the, a plan that's being used in the state of New Mexico. There, the, uh, they have a, a volunteer assistant, we, which they refer to as a, a personal production assistant. That person uh, does not grow at their residence or business. They travel to the registered cardholders' home and assist them there. They cannot transport product to that cardholder. For those people that live in hospice situations or apartments where the landlord does not permit them to um, grow their own plants at home. Uh, the New Mexico plan creates, has a nonprofit, uh, nonprofit producing entity. And this plan w was also included in this bill, requires a five member board, uh, requires that, um, that board, that that board operate that um, facility basically on a cost of cost of service basis. The bill sets forth three types of licenses, a grower license, and that would be limited to 95 plants or less, a product manufacturer license, and that's for uh, the tinctures, the oils, the edible products, it allows a dual licensure for a grower and manufacturer. And then for transportation purposes, it provides a courier license so that there is no direct grower to, to patient contact. Finally, probably the most important part of the bill is the last page in the handout, and I'd like to draw that to your attention. This bill, this bill has a carefully constructed transition schedule from the current law to the new law. On passage and approval of this act, issuance of cards under the current system would stop immediately. Beginning on June 1, the Department of Public Health and Human Services would reissue new laminated cards to all, all registered card holders except those with the severe or chronic pain designation. Beginning June 1, the
the department would begin issuing new cards under the new severe chronic pain with diagnostic test objective proof and a second physician review. That would start in June 1. The existing severe or chronic pain cards would expire August 31, 2011, thereby giving legitimate people that can establish their pain syndrome with the diagnostic test to two physicians a 90-day window to obtain a new card. The bill repeals the current law in all respects on July 1. At that date, uh, any storefronts that have not closed would have to close and turn in any remaining product to law enforcement. The manufacturers and growers that are existing right now under the caregiver status would have a period in June to obtain temporary licensing from the State Licensing Authority, which this bill designates as a Public Service Commission. They would close their doors on June 1 and go into a 90-day period of hiatus so that law enforcement could make sure that the system is cleaned out with any non-compliant operations. The new licensing the newly licensed businesses would reopen on October 1, including the couriers who would be allowed to make <coughs> transfers of product from the manufacturers or growers to the registered cardholders. So that's a basic system set forth in the bill. I know there's a a number of amendments. I've got a technical amendment I'd like to offer and get on the bill, and then I'll be happy to respond to questions and have the other senators offer their amendments.